Welcome back to Riley's Collection. I'm Riley, and today we're taking a look at the Marvel Legends Spider-Punk and Spider-Man 2099. This year, 2023 is the year that we will finally receive the long-awaited sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, arguably one of the greatest animated movies of all time, also arguably one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time, and just so happens to be my number one in both of those categories. So when I caught wind that Marvel Legends was going to be doing more Spider-Verse figures to coincide with the release of this sequel, I'm not going to lie, I had my fingers crossed that they were going to be good. And we've already looked at the miles. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a card right about here so you can watch that if you feel so inclined to. But I actually thought that figure had a lot of really good things going for it. And so it seemed like maybe this line of action figures was going to be promising. And so today I have the Spider-Punk and the Spider-Man 2099 from the Across the Spider-Verse wave. And I do have to say that there is a lot good going for these guys, but there's also a lot of bad. So before we talk about anything else, Let's hop into the aesthetic. So let's start with Spider-Man 2099 here. Spider-Man 2099 is really, really tall. He kind of towers over most other Marvel Legends. And at first glance, he looks pretty good. But when you look at him, you'll notice that the lines on the red here get really lost because they're not defined at all by any sort of paint or anything like that. And they're not very deeply sculpted. So it's kind of hard to make out the detailing on the red there. And then on the blue, they completely skipped out on any sort of detail there is supposed to be like lines uh, all across the blue and i'll put a picture up right here just to show you what it looks like in the movie but there's just no detail on the blue at all now that being said i do really like the blue that they went with here i think the red is a little bit too bright and the red in particular makes it look very cheap the cape on the back is made of like this translucent plastic and it's red and it kind of fades out to a clear plastic and honestly i think it looks really ugly i really really don't like this cape and i'm interested to see what it looks like more in the movie but on this i really really do not like it as you can see it is an entirely unique sculpt to be accurate to the spider-verse movie and it does do a really good job at conveying that uh, you look at this and you can tell right off the bat yep it is the across the spider-verse spider-man 2099 no doubt about it the very distinctive spider emblem on the front that does get broken up when you articulate it which i am not a huge fan of the little batman things on the arm for lack of a better term are made of like this soft plastic so they'll bend and they might be a little warped out of the packaging so you might need to heat those up to uh, get them to look how you want them to the head sculpt looks pretty good it looks pretty accurate i mean everything about this does look generally pretty accurate it's just missing a lot of detail which generally you can expect from marvel legends so i think in terms of the aesthetic you're getting pretty much exactly what you think you'd get it looks like the spider-man 2099 from the movie granted it's missing details but it'll fit in just fine with the other spider-verse figures we'll talk about my real problems with this figure later on in the video and then taking a look at the spider punk here he is definitely very punk inspired i love the head sculpt with the dripping mascara eyes it looks really good and the messy webbing we get a lot of paintwork here the buttons are painted on the jacket as well as all the spikes except for on the armband here the spikes there aren't painted but I think that's okay well some of them are some of them are painted but not all of them and then we do get this blue painting on the arms which I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be but I guess we'll find out when the movie comes out you got his leather biker jacket which is very shiny and I think that works really well for this figure his long laced up boots and then you get some paint detail on the upper leg there and yeah I think this figure just looks really really good i think he's definitely aesthetically my favorite of the wave and he's got his little guitar here and it looks really good the frets aren't painted or anything like that the strings aren't painted which is kind of a little bit of a bummer but you do get all this nice paintwork on the body of the guitar with all these stickers and the tuning pegs are also painted and then the strap is molded in a blue plastic i think we've seen this uh guitar accessory before 
on the last spider punk or maybe he came with a different one i don't know let me know down in the comments but it definitely looks really good on this spider punk right here he's also got like little tears on his shirt at the top and the bottom uh and little wrinkle details and the sculpt of this guy is just so good he is really really thin like the miles the spider-man 2099 isn't nearly as thin as spider punk or miles but spider punk is really thin and he does have some wobbling on the joints there just because of how thin he is and then on the back you do get this spray painted spider symbol there that has fsnm i'm not really sure what that stands for but maybe we'll find out in the movie but yeah overall i think the spider-man 2099 looks pretty good pretty close to what it's supposed to and i think it's definitely passable in terms of the aesthetic and then the spider punk is really really good looking i really really genuinely love the look of this spider punk i think it's one of the most fun looking spider men in my collection and when i look at this it just makes me smile so as you can see here i have all the accessories that came with both of these spider-man figures laid out on the rotating base and unsurprisingly it's not a lot to talk about of course the spider punk does come with his guitar which is a great Fun accessory which you definitely kind of have to have with this character you can't have spider punk without his guitar i don't think i've ever seen spider punk depicted without his guitar and now that i'm saying that i'm realizing that i have a poster on my wall that depicts spider punk without his guitar but my point still stands okay and then you do get a set of extra hands for the spider-man 2099 being open hands there and they're painted pretty nicely and then you do get an extra hand for the spider punk being the thwipping hand so you don't get a replacement hand for the pick holding hand that will always have his pick in it you can't change it unless you get something custom which is really disappointing and spider-man 2099 doesn't come with anything other than one extra set of hands so yeah accessories are really really lackluster obviously there's only so much it can include but we're not getting a build a figure piece here just one extra set of hands isn't very acceptable at all and i think that getting one replaceable hand and not even a second extra replaceable hand for the spider punk is also a very criminal act against collectors but uh yeah the guitar is cool now let's talk about the articulation now I do want to do this relatively quickly because we do have two figures to go over, but for Spider-Man 2099 here, he does look up about that far. He does look down about that far. I think it is on a double ball peg because you do get some tilt there, but relatively terrible range for the head there. These shoulders do go out about that far, so about 90 degrees. You do get 360 degree rotation there and also at the bicep pinless double jointed elbows move all the way in no problem wrist swivels and hinges back and forth we do get an ab crunch that moves back about that far so that's pretty decent again it does break up the sculpt there and then you can get it to go forward that much so again that's pretty decent we do have a swivel at the waist moves all the way around the leg can go out about that much so you can almost get a split but not quite leg can move up about that far so like 90 degrees you do get a swivel at the thigh here pinless double jointed knees go all the way in very nicely and then you do get an ankle rocker from side to side which works very well and then the foot can pivot up about that far and it can go down about that far so the articulation on this guy isn't too too bad uh you can manage to get him in some poses but it is going to be kind of limited nothing is really gonna allow you to be able to get any crazy movements or anything like that you don't really get a great range of motion with the joints here and because of that it makes it really difficult for him to stand because it's hard to get him in positions that are like natural standing positions and also on top of that he has the tiniest feet ever so getting him posed up for this video was kind of a nightmare any of the shots you see in this video where he's doing any kind of pose uh took me forever to set up because it is just incredibly difficult to stand this guy and i think that's a major problem then for the spider punk we do get a head that looks up about that far which is pretty far he does look down about that far and the head kind of slides back and forth on that ball joint the arm does go out 
almost 90 degrees, but not quite. It does rotate all the way around. You do get a bicep swivel, but I would be careful with it because the connection seems pretty thin and fragile. Double jointed elbow moves all the way in. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge back and forth. We do get an ab crunch that goes forward all the way. That is a 90 degree angle right there. So it goes pretty far down. It does look pretty weird when you look at the joint, but I think the jacket actually does a pretty good job hiding that. And then when you move it back, it does look really weird. It looks like his stomach is popping out of itself, but you do get really good range backwards. At the waist, you do get a swivel. The legs move out about that far. So again, almost a split, but not quite. The legs can move up about that far, so about 90 degrees. You do get a thigh swivel, double jointed pinless knees move all the way in very nicely. You do get a boot cut here, moves all the way around. You get your standard Marvel Legends ankle rocker and the foot can pivot up about that much and it can pivot down that much. So the articulation on Spider-Punk is gonna be a significant amount better than the Spider-Man 2099. And on top of that, he's not upper body heavy like the Spider-Man 2099 is. So that's not contributing to him falling over. And he also doesn't have the smallest feet ever. So I actually don't have any problems standing up Spider-Punk, which is my favorite thing about him. And honestly, I think that this guy is the best figure in the way of best, most fun. You're gonna have a lot of fun posing this guy around and just getting him into quirky situations with other figures in your collection. And yeah, I think there's a lot of fun to be had with this guy as far as the Spider-Man 2099. I think it's really lacking a lot in the playability department because it looks the part to an extent, right? It could definitely be better as far as the aesthetic, Definitely not as good as the Spider-Punk in terms of the aesthetic, but it also just lacks in playability because it is so difficult for him to stand up and there he goes, knocking stuff over even as he's falling down. For some size comparisons, here they are next to the Marvel Legends Miles from the same wave and the Marvel Legends Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man Noir. And they all look really good together, all being from the same line of figures, from the same set of movies. And that's like the biggest appeal of having these guys is having them all together so you can kind of create your Spider-Verse display. And they all just kind of look like they hopped right out of the movie. And so because of that, I think it is gonna be worth it for a lot of people to pick all of these guys up, even if they don't like all of the figures. And for some other domestic comparisons, here we have them next to the Deluxe Spider-Man 2 Marvel Legends from the Insomniac PS5 Spider-Man game and the McFarlane Flash movie Michael Keaton Batman video on him coming very soon. For some import comparisons, here we have the Sentinel Peter B. Parker on the left and on the right we have the SH Figuarts Dragon Ball Super Superhero Gohan and here they are next to the Mafex Symbiote Spider-Man. So what's the verdict on these figures? Well, I do think that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy the stylized aesthetic of these Marvel Legends, kind of breaking away from the norm that the line usually tends to stick to. Uh, so if you're into that, I think you'll like these. As far as articulation, I think the Spider-Punk is definitely a win, and then the Spider-Man 2099 kind of leaves a lot to be desired. And I think overall playability is definitely better on the Spider-Punk, as well as the aesthetic being much higher quality, I think on the Spider Punk, whereas the Spider-Man 2099 looks a little cheap, a little unfinished. I do think that if you've been collecting this line, you'll probably want to get most, if not all, of the figures from this line. Personally, I kind of like to cherry pick the ones that I like and the ones that I don't. So if I had to pick one to avoid, it would definitely be this one. I don't think there's enough good going for it in order to make up for the bad and you don't get any good accessories to go with him aside from the extra set of hands which are just open hands. You don't even get claws with this guy so it's just lacking a lot over here whereas I think with the spider punk you get a really fun package. You definitely don't get enough hands but the guitar is a really nice addition. That being said if they didn't include the guitar I would have been mad but I do still think that the accessories are gonna be a little bit better than this guy. And just the fact that this guy stands up really well and poses really well just makes him a lot more fun than this. These two figures are from the same wave, 
featured in the same movie, but the quality could not be worlds farther apart. So I'd have to say I would not recommend the Spider-Man 2099 at all. I don't think it's a great figure and I don't think it's worth your $25 you're spending on it, but I definitely would recommend the Spider-Punk. I think it's a really fun figure and it has a lot going for it. Anybody who picks this guy up is gonna be satisfied with what they're getting here. But with all that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help this channel out. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button because subscribing to this channel gives you lifetime virtual access to my collection. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. All right, guys, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.